Hi there, my name is Joost Hermans and I'm the co-founder of Apollix. Apollix is a consultancy agency specialized in process mining and relocated in Rotterdam. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through all the benefits process mining has to offer for your sales organization and Salesforce platform. First, I'm going to talk about process mining. What is it and how does it work? And then move on to a demo where I can show you what it's all about. So, Process mining is basically a data-driven way to optimize your business process. We use digital breadcrumbs for this. Every time you work in your system and take some steps, for example, creating opportunity, moving on to the next stage, one of these digital breadcrumbs is automatically created. And one of those breadcrumbs consists of three parts. It holds the case ID, which opportunity we're talking about, the activity, what happened, and the timestamp, when did this happen? By following these digital breadcrumbs, we get an overview of what actually happens in such an opportunity. And the great thing is, we can not only do that for one opportunity, but actually for all the opportunities within your Salesforce system. Basically creating a full transparent overview of what actually happened in your sales organization. Based on these data-driven insights, we can take some next steps, analyze the process and find bottlenecks. Where can we optimize your sales opportunities and make sure your ratios are coming up? Also, we can actually see the use of your Salesforce system. So basically understanding the user adoption and creating a better ROI for your IT system. Well, let's see directly in the demo what that's all about. Here we are in the pros mining platform of Salonis. Everything you'll see in this demo is based on data from a Salesforce system. And what we're looking at right now are those digital breadcrumbs I talked about earlier. We see the creation of an opportunity, going one day later into stage one, praying discovery, and it flows through the, the stages up until the moment this opportunity is lost. What we're looking at right now is the most common variant in this process. In total, we have a number of 83. We are only seeing 39% uh, of all the cases we have in our Salesforce system. If we take a look at all the different opportunities, basically seeing the system truth, we see something happening. We see that our sales process is actually way more complex than one might think. We see the spaghetti model where all stages are actually connecting with each other. And it makes us question, is our sales process actually being designed correctly? Why are these stages connected? How can we improve the use and adoption of Salesforce? In order to make the best impact, we're looking to, uh, to make the, to looking at the five, mo five most common variants. Here, we're looking at the first 28,000 opportunities of the system. And what you can see here is that these opportunities all flow through the first three stages without any opportunity being closed and lost. And that's very interesting because the whole idea of stages is that they basically filter out the opportunities and uh, make sure that the opportunities going through the next stage have a higher uh, chance of being closed. So our question is, are we making correct use of the different stages or are people going through them way too easily? Additionally, we can actually look if fields are being used. For example, if we actually add the information uh, on who's our executive sponsor, who's gonna sign off on our budget. And we see that this only happens a mere 1800 times out of the 28,000 opportunities we're looking at. Meaning that either we do not know who our executive sponsor is after we already went through the stage proof, or, that we don't fill it into our system and are actually not making proper use of it. Because adding the executive sponsor, as you can see in this example, makes the throughput time from stage four to five shorter by three days. So it is very interesting and important to actually add that executive sponsor. What's great about post mining is that we can add contextual data to our analysis. We can, for example, start looking at closing rates. And a close rate is really a really important measure within sales as it obviously tells you how many deals which you, uh, opportunities which you get start, start with are actually being closed. 
And right now we can see that this is only a mere 18% and our target is actually to climb up to 40. So right now it's very interesting to see which activities uh, contribute to a high closing rate and which activities contribute to a low uh, closing rate. So let's take a look in our process explorer. If I add a couple extra activities, we see that uh, indeed adding an executive sponsor heavily improves the chances of us closing the deal. The moment we add an executive sponsor before going into stage five negotiation, we have a 90% closing rate, indicating that adding that executive sponsor, making proper use of the system and having that in place helps us close deals. Additionally, we have activities that lower the closing rate, such as move close date out of quarter, which means that we don't expect, ex expect this deal to land within the same quarter, which is important for our targets and our budgets. However, every time this has been done, the deal was lost, meaning that it's very important to understand why we are moving our closing rates, uh, dates out of quarter and in order to prevent that, to increase our sales performance. So we want to uh, basically understand and find a root cause of this activity. For this, we go into the conformance checker. The conformance checker compares the system design, how we think the process is supposed to go and compares that with every single case which happens in reality. So we have one of these models designs put into Salonis, and we can see that 78% of our opportunities actually follow a flow which we allow them to flow. However, there's 63 different violations on our process flow. That could be, for example, undesired activities or orders of activities that should not exist. For example, going from stage three to stage five, while skipping stage four. And we have a list of these violations right here. Well, what immediately catches our attention is the move close date out of quarter. It occurs in 9% of the cases. If we focus on this undesired activity, we can see when this happened and we can perform a root cause analysis. So what can be an underlying effect or contributes to the fact that we take this activity? And if we look through it, we can see that one of our managers is actually um, often responsible for this, taking this step. And this would be a great point to start a discussion and a conversation in order to find out why he uh, used this activity a lot in order to help our entire sales process become better. And in the end, improving our closing rate and improving our ROI on our system. As you can see, Prosman is a great way to create transparency within your organization and optimize your sales opportunities. Additionally, it improves adoption and therefore your ROI on your CRM system. Thanks for watching and we're looking forward to hearing from you.